um, tell us, well, how do you like that? Um, <laughs> continue. Uh, just tell us kind of what you do, what your company is about. You may be a business owner, you may work for a company, that kind of thing. And do remember to let us know what a good referral would be. Um, also, I have, to, I have to move my pictures here. Also, please enter your info in the chat because uh, we can save that chat. And if there's any kind of information, uh, your contact information is all there so others can have it. Our presenter today, we do have someone present uh, every week. Uh, you get 15 minutes and our presenter today is gonna be Elizabeth May of Nessie's Treasures. And today Elizabeth will talking will be talking about, I wish I could see it because it's got all this stuff in front of it. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean that Elizabeth, oh jeepers. Anyway, she's gonna talk about our spiritual well-being. Um, after that, we're going to have our breakout rooms. I can talk about it, I know. And yeah, our breakout room discussion is going to uh, be about, I'd like this to be interesting, about red flags. Because we all have an innate uh, ability in us. It's kind of for our own protection. It's kind of that fight or flight thing. And it's about our red flags because if you're new to this group, we talk about relationships, we talk about who we are, we get to know each other. It's a way to get to know people better and I'm gonna become friends and you know, friends buy from friends, generally speaking. So um, red flags and do you get them, when you get them? And um, honestly, do you listen? Do you listen to your red flags? And after that, we will go to helpful hints. Helpful hints today is going to be um, our very own Richard uh, Lupino of Infinia Development. And I'm really interested in this. Richard is going to discuss how to help your SEOs, even if you have an agency. So I'm super duper interested in this. And then after that's all said and done, our recordings will be stopped. And then we have what we like to call a free for all. It's a time for brainstorming, uh, creative conversation. If we're having any issues, whether you know in our business, you know, should, should you build a website? What should you do? I don't know how to handle this customer, that kind of thing, or, or what, whatever is bothering you at that time. We're all here to learn about each other and help each other. And that's what we've got so far. So we can go ahead and get started. Let me just uh, get out of this. I can figure out how, there we go. And, oh, sorry about that. We can stop sharing that screen. How do I stop sharing the screen? Well, let me stop sharing. God help me, please. Should be a button, uh, like a green. Yeah, there you go. A little green bar. Got it. Hi, guys. All right. All right. So I'm going to go different today. We're going to go counterclockwise today. And we're going to start with Richard. So our 60 second commercial. Tell us about you, Richard, what you do and what a good referral would be. Okay. Good morning. My name is Richard Lupino. I am president and CEO of Infinia Development, a full stack web development agency. And I, you can't hear me? No. Oh, oh, guys, so you're doing this like you couldn't hear me. I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm just. I get back on track. We'll start with the So we help people with their online presence, um, whether it's, it's uh, getting a website up to engage clients, uh, getting found, or just getting a uh, presence out there at all that people can go ahead and engage with you to help you grow your business. So at Infinity Development, at, uh, at Infinity Development, we help you get seen and get found so you can get paid. A good referral for me uh, would bet to be uh, graphic designers and marketing agencies. Beautiful. Thank you, Richard. We're going to go right around to uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what is your name? Eleonora or Elizabeth? I don't know if Elizabeth is, she's trying to dial in for audio. Okay. She's All right, so we're going to skip uh, over Elizabeth. We can go back. Uh, now, now, hey, Maurice, good morning. Go ahead, on mute yourself. Morning. I am Maurice Laux. I am with New York Life. And I'm sorry, I'm talking a little funny. I actually had a dental appointment this morning. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I, I can help with the aspects of long-term care, college planning, life insurance needs if needed, 
things like that. A good uh, referral for me would be homeowners, new parents, business, small business owners, things like that. Awesome. Thank you, Maurice. And moving along to Scott Brenner. Hello, Scott. Please tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and what a good referral would be. Um, I am. Hi. Hi, everybody. Pleasure to meet you all. Um, I have been uh, living in Beacon for the last uh, seven or eight years and I've just immersed myself as a, you know, entrepreneurial partner with a couple other people in town. I've uh, helped open a movie theater and uh, was a partner in a, you know, cocktail syrup company on Main Street. Um, I've, I've moved on to get involved in a really fun project in Newburgh called East by Northeast. It's a film and music festival, um, an, an annual film and music festival. And we're in our third year uh, looking to grow it to the size of like a, you know, a South by Southwest, um, but right here in Newburgh to bring, you know, all the, um, you know, that cash injection into the city for development and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I also do culinary concept consulting, things like that uh, for restaurants and food operations. I got a couple different contracts going on. That's pretty much the long and short of it. I guess. All right. You're yeah. a busy, busy guy. That's awesome. Is there a good referral for you? Meaning? Uh, as someone to do business with kind of thing. Is there anything you're looking for? Um, we are looking for sponsors for the festival mostly i mean we're looking to find people that would find the opportunity of exposure at a festival that's bringing in tens of thousands of people annually to you know partner with us whether it's through services or financial um you know it's a lot to put together every year so oh, yeah. um yeah we're, we're looking to just keep keep our networking alive because you know we're looking to establish something that will benefit you know everybody at the same time right um so we're just looking for interested parties to get on board. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so very, very much, Scott. We're glad you're here. Yeah, thanks. And our next will be Christina. All right, Christina, how are you? Tell us a little bit about you, what you do, what a good referral would be. All right, thanks for the invitation. Um, I am a content writer and a podcast manager. And I've been doing this since 2008. Um, a good referral for me would be small business owners who are stretched with time and those who are interested, it's small business owners as well as like internet marketers. Right now, that's primarily who I work with, um, who are just trying to do everything and they need extra time in their day. You know, there's nothing I love better than them sending me their podcast files and they don't have to think about it anymore. Um, because they know that I can get them uploaded and get their, you know, their feed is on iTunes and all that kind of thing. So um, that's what I do. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. Thank you, Christina. Okay. Um, how are we doing, um, Liz? Yes. Good. Can't hear you. Okay, we'll come back to Liz. Let's go on to Samantha Wack. Hi, Hello. Sam. How you doing? Uh, go ahead. Uh, my name's uh, Samantha Wack. I have two businesses. First, I am an independent uh, freelance travel agent that uh, focuses on U.S. travel. And I also sell uh, paparazzi jewelry, as you can see behind me. Uh, a good referral for me would be a person that does um, in-person vendor events. And of course, anyone who'd love to support me on Facebook, see my live, share, and all that good stuff. Um, it's nice to meet the new faces. I uh, hope you enjoy this group. Thank you, Samantha. And Megan, we'll go back to Liz after Megan. Just texting, I was just messaging her with a, a tip, so. Uh, if anybody ever has issues with their audio, next to the little speaker, there's a little arrow and you can choose the microphone and the speaker. Sometimes that is mm -hmm. what's wrong. So 
Yes, I had that. Hi, issue. everybody. <laughs> I am Megan Romero. Joanne and I are the co-founders of PNN. Uh, we love to network with people and bring people can together. We have mutual love for that. So we decided to start this group a couple months now already, I think. I know. Amazing. But my day job is I am <laughs> my day job. One of many. One of my many day jobs. <laughs> is that I have a bookkeeping firm or bookkeeping company. I was, I was, I was corrected recently. Uh, I have a bookkeeping company and financial consultant. Um, I am also life insurance licensed in New York and South Carolina. Um, I'm working towards my securities license, hopefully soon, so I could give a full financial help to anybody that, uh, needs it. And then I also, for funsies, <laughs> I do paparazzi with Joanne and with Samantha. Just love blessing people with jewelry. And we have men's and women's jewelry. I do have a bunch of men's jewelry. If you guys are interested, let me know. I go live every uh, Sunday and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. So I would hope anybody wants to come and join me. But um, Let's see. I also have an eBay store with my husband. I could just go on and on. There's just a lot of stuff that I do. So <laughs> anyway, a good referral for me would be um, families or individuals, especially starting out that are looking for um, a life insurance policy to get them going, um, especially with families. We really like to get in to, to have a whole policy for the whole family in one where we get child riders and all. And then when the children turn 25, they then get a policy with no need for uh, the medical checkups. They just fold into their own policy, no questions asked by Primerica. So that's me. All right. Thank you, Megan. So much, so much going on there. Um, hi, guys. Uh, let me, I guess I don't what Elizabeth, I guess, is trying to get in. She's our speaker today, so I hope she makes it. Um, if not, we're going to have to wing it somehow. So anyway, hi, my name is Joanne Zagari. I am the owner and creator of Blue Dove Marketing, which I simply organize online events on Facebook. And my, uh, my thing is to get your business in front of people who never knew you existed. Um, I also, uh, I am a paparazzi. I don't really uh, promote that, but I am promoting today or right now or currently is um, I do assisted livings and I had bring, brought my stuff into assisted livings uh, last year before this whole pandemic hit. Well, recently I got to go back to one of them and was very disheartened to know that a lot of the people there had passed due to the, this whole COVID thing. So what I'm putting together, what's called blessing bags. And if anybody wants to donate each piece of paparazzi jewelry, everything's $5, everything's let a nickel free. So I have these blessing bags with two pieces of jewelry each it's ten dollars. There's no sales tax. There's no shipping. You just, I just bill you for it. I put together the bags and I bring them in. I'm looking to get thirty bags. Uh, right now, I have, I believe, thirteen. Uh, I think somebody just bought three, so we have sixteen bags. So if anybody's interested in donating uh, and bringing jewelry to the assisted living for um, for the people there kind of to brighten their day. They do love jewelry. They do love to have, you know, pretty things and nice things. So that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you. Is that enough? Yes. Okay, Liz, are you ready? Can you hear me this time? Yes, ma'am, we can. All right, go ahead. Tell us, tell us about you, girl. Hi, sorry. I had to, um, my microphone was disabled in the laptop. I had to figure that, that out. So, awesome. and so my name is Liz. Um, this is Jasmine. This is my friend's stepdaughter. Um, so she wants, she wanted to be on the meeting with me. So she's here. Um, I do, um, holistic healing, um, things, which I'm going to go through later. Um, but I do like jewelry, teas, um, cleansing and, um, meditation things with people. 
Um, so I'm looking for anybody who is into that sort of thing, who would like to um, enhance their physical and spiritual well-being. Beautiful. Yes, actually, Liz. Now it says Leonora. Are you Liz or Leonora? Who? How are we addressing you? Oh, it is Liz. Um, I think my mother-in-law. This is my laptop. Okay. She used Zoom last, so it's going to oh, show okay. her. <laughs> But it's me. Right. Yeah, El yeah. Eleonora Madrid Ramos is my mother-in-law. She, okay. she right. You can change your name if you want to. <laughs> That's at least we know. This is this is Liz. We know this is Liz. All right. So Liz is actually our speaker today. So um, so what we're gonna do? We've got everybody introduced. Thank you. You know, I just really just want to say one thing to everybody. Thanks for especially for those of you who keep coming back. Thank you. Every, every Friday you're here and you're with us and we, we love your support. Um, we just basically do this to get people talking and, you know, we do it on Friday to kind of make it easy and whatever. So just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy day, busy week to, uh, you know, spend the hour, hour and a half with us that you have. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Okay. So let's do this everybody is going to be muted and uh liz do you need to share the screen um at all or i do but i don't know how to do that Would I do okay. all right you should be able to go to share screen and it should work for you liz is our speaker she has 15 minutes or up to 15 minutes to uh tell us about uh holistic uh spirituality good stuff okay can you guys see that Everybody can see it? Okay. Yes, we see it. So hi, everybody. I kind of kept my slide short so that I can talk through it, but I kept it if anybody had questions. Um, so I am Nessie's Treasures. Um, I have a very short presentation, which is okay. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> so here, um, it's a quartz point. So for those who aren't into spiritual healing, um, Crystals are known to have different vibrations and energies and to provide um, healing based on what the stone is. So for example, quartz is an amplifier of other um, stones and it's also just a generic um, healer energy cleanser. So I put that as my title just to give a background of that picture. Um, okay, so what is Nessie's? We, I am holistic healing through natural and historic ways, not pharmaceuticals. Um, so some practices that I use that I'll go later through can be crystal healing, um, herbs. So herbal teas actually were started for um, healing medicinal properties. Um, I do smudging and meditation. Um, so kind of healing that way. Um, I do also do cards. Um, I do crystal jewelry. Um, so I did put a shaman on here because typically when you think of holistic healing some people go back to what the roots were so I used him symbolically um, why do I do this um, for me I started um, making jewelry um, and doing crystal healing myself as a way for self-help and finding myself um, now I do it as a service to others because as I'm finding myself I would like to help other people um, the way that I was helped. Um, I also do this because I truly believe that we are all one. It doesn't matter what path we're on. We are all one. It is calming to me with to make the things that I make. And I also do this in my own practice. My own healing and spiritual practice is to give back to others. So for me, this is a way of giving my devotion out to others. Um, products that I offer. So I do have crystals, um, just generic crystals. I do make herbal teas. I do read cards. I do listen. People do come to me just to vent. Oh, I love your pendulum, Joanne. That's beautiful. Um, I do listen to people because sometimes spiritual healing is just having a safe space and just having someone listen without me saying anything because as you speak, you will find your own clarity, sometimes. Or you just need somebody to say, I understand and I'm sorry. Um, 
jewelry and hair accessories. I didn't clip them, but um, Sam actually has, I have French style barrettes that I have gemstone pieces on. Um, oh, are you, are you grabbing it? <laughs> and I have more on my website. Um, I do smudging and cleansing. So I do have Sage and Palo Santo um, among other things. And I do teach energy clearing um, without the use of tools, um, which I can, I'll show everybody when I get up how to do that. Um, I do have, other, when I say tools, I mean like pendulums and things of that nature. And then soon I will have my mastery in Reiki. I do have my one and two, so I can practice. Um, Reiki is a form of energy healing. Um, a quick background on that. It was taught by Mikao Yusui um, in the 1920s. And it's a Japanese practice that takes the universal healing energy and it can help heal different parts of the body. Uh, let's see, and these in the photos, this is Herkimer diamonds, which is also a natural amplifier. Um, and I did make the studs and the bracelet. They're very dainty, but they're super pretty and elegant. Um, and then this is a rose quartz pendulum, which rose quartz is known for love, but not just love of others. It is also love of self and love of friendships, um, which is really good stone to use for, for somebody who maybe wants to work on their compassion, their love of self and their love of others, um, not just romantically. But, or universal love, which is another really good one. Um, testimonials that I have, Sam, I put yours on here. Um, hers is the first one actually, is that all of the items are of great quality. I love the items I purchased from her and she's willing to make custom items. I am um, kind and great to work with. And then my mom used this one and she's a skeptic. She actually is a skeptic, but I got her into it. Um, she got her Kimmer diamond bracelet. She does get a lot of compliments on it. My mom's a teacher, so she wears it in class. Um, she teaches um, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, well, actually she teaches K through six. Um, I don't know the term for it now, but special needs was the term when I was going to school. Um, and then she also uses it for energy healing. She does a form called biomagnetic therapy which uses magnets to correct your polarity and detox. So she does use hers when she is doing healing as well. Um, and then I know I went very quickly. I wanted to give time for questions or clarity if I need to. Um, and these are some teas that I make. This is inner goddess tea. So this is more of a, a woman's tea. It has herbs that help with um, like menopause or um, you know, just to regulate things, be all good. Elder immunity has elderflower and other herbs that help with cold, flu, sinus issues. Um, it cuts the phlegm, it um, reduces the headaches, the fever, gets you to go to sleep. I call it my version of sleepy time. Um, and then heart health. This is really good for people who have had heart attacks, who've had strokes, who have high blood pressure. All of the herbs in it, not only does it tastes good. It helps to regulate. So I try to make things like this that help people um, just regulate themselves and possibly not have to be on so many medications. Disclaimer, I am not FDA approved. So and please ask your doctor before you try anything. I just make things based on what I have learned, studied, or know. Are there any questions? I know I went kind of quick. Hey, any questions? This was really good, Liz. I really, really love it. Um, I, I love crystals. I have a whole uh, bowl here full of all sorts of crystals. Some I don't even know what they are. Um, but I, I love this stuff. And, and I really think there's a lot to be said for um, the earth. And, and the crystals that come from the earth as far as the, as the human or any living animal, uh, as far as the energies uh, of, of that is given, it just comes right up. So the stones are very, very, I think very beneficial. 
for a lot of people, whether it be for protection or or anything else. So, anybody have anything to to add here, or any any questions at all? If you stop sharing, you might be able. To, you'll probably be able to see everybody a lot clearer. Okay. 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 Uh... Somebody waves at you, you wouldn't be able to see it if they're <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm on an old laptop, so I'm hey. trying to figure it's not going back. It oh, new here. Let's see. Uh, it should be like a little green bar across, and then it'll be at the top or the okay. bottom of the screen. Yeah, got it. There you go. There go. Hi, everybody. Hey. We're all back. Woo -woo. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, uh, anyone else? Anybody have any questions at all about crystals, about teas, or? You're pointing down. I don't see anyone. Maurice. Maurice? Okay. Hi, Maurice. I actually don't have questions about crystals or anything like that, but if anybody wonders what kind of, you know, conversation or anything with you can have with Elizabeth, she's absolutely amazing. I've personally had venting sessions with her, and, and you know, there's no judgment. No, you know, she tells it like it is, but you feel safe enough to talk to her. So, and, you know, that's an awesome testimonial. Yes, definitely no judgment. It's not my path. I will listen to what you say. If you want advice or you want my opinion, state it. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I won't give it, but I try to do it as respectfully as possible. Love it. Absolutely love it. Go ahead, Sam. I'll even jump in as a practicing pagan myself. Um, I work with a lot of the stuff that she does. And I'm very particular with who I involve myself with in this practice and Elizabeth is very good. So don't hesitate if you're curious. Love it. Well, you have a lot, lot of, a couple of nice testimonials here, Liz. Good for you. That's wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Um, make sure, did you put your website in the chat by any chance? I will, I'm on Facebook, but let me link it. Um, okay. Whatever links can help people find you is good. That goes for everyone as far as the chat goes. Okay, well, absolutely. I, I actually have a question too. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, Christina. Shoot. I'm fascinated with crystals. I don't know a lot about them, but do you do anything with them? Or is it just a matter of having them in your room or whatever? Yes, you can do things with them. Um, it depends how involved you, you want to be. So I'm also like Sam, I am pagan. Um, you can wear them. Um, I'm actually wearing a snake skin pendant right now that I got, but um, you can put them in your house and they do mean different things. Like Joanne said, protection. So some people place them by their front door, they bury them. Um, if you do magical workings, you'll use them for that. Um, you can place some by your desk for prosperity, abundance, for focus. Um, and oh, I like some, that. That's what I need. <laughs> we can, yes. Um, I'll get your information from the chat and I'll sure. definitely reach out because I, this is like an hour's today's conversation, <laughs> um, but they do, um, you can also, there is physical healing associated with some, um, like my, my aunt, for example, um, has had multiple forms of cancers. She survived every one, but she was gifted by other people. And then in her recent bounce, I have gifted her red Jasper, um, in a stone form, like just a plain stone. And then in jewelry form, red Jasper is for long-term healing and recovery. So she really goes to her red Jasper before, um, as she's getting a cancer bout, she finds she goes towards it and she uses it. And then when she gets a diagnosis, it is with her in her bag, in her bed, everywhere. So people use it for that, for the strength of that stone as well. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. So if I was to show you a stone, I'm not sure what it is that I'm able to show it to you. Do you, are you uh, very well versed in these stones and what they are and what they do? If I don't know it, I can look it up. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, definitely. Sounds awesome. Anyone else at all? 
Sounds like yeah. you're gonna have a good Zoom with Joanne where she's gonna be like, what's this? What's that? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? I love a crystal this? Zoom party. <laughs> oh, this so is the weekend party. to do it. I am with that my other I'm with my Zoom other party. It would. And I am with my other um pagan friends this weekend. So this is the weekend to ask. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. All right. Good, good. All right. So I'm thinking nobody else has any questions. So we can certainly move on now. Thank you so much, Liz. That was extremely informative. Go ahead. What, what Meg? I'm counting. Okay. Um, you want to do breakout rooms or do you just want to uh, everybody kind of chuck chat together? Let's keep it together. I figure like when we're at seven, like if we're under eight. Okay. Including. All right because I have to actually do the breakout and stay out of the room. If we have yep, nine yep. or more total, then it's easier to do a breakout room and better experience. So like we're at seven of you guys, so probably mm -hmm. better to keep it here. Okay. So the only thing that when we do this all together, remember it's a 10 minute, it's 10 minutes. So I'm gonna start the timer and I wanna make sure that everybody gets to speak who wants to speak. That's the only thing. That's why I like breakout rooms because it's a smaller group and everybody can get to talk. So let's make sure that everybody gets in there. And if we don't see you do this, go, hey, me, 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 kind of thing. So make sure that we see you, okay. What, Meg? I'm just kidding, okay. <laughs> All right, so the question was, uh, or very simply put, about red flags because it's an eight in us. I guess it kind of like just goes on the back of what Liz is talking about. It's something that's innate in us. It's our own protection system that we all have. And it's that feeling of, oh, no, that's quite right kind of thing. It's your red flag. And so many times, me personally, through my life, I've ignored a lot of them. We ignore it instead of She's saying yes. I think women are really good about this. They just ignore those red flags. And trust me, if you have that feeling, something's up. So let's just delve into this a little bit. I'm going to start the timer at 10 minutes. Everybody can certainly get to, to speak. And how do you guys feel about these red flags? And do you get them? And do you listen? Yes. Richard. And yes. Yes and yes. In, in different ways. Some of it, sometimes it's just a gut feeling. It's like I get a read, you know, and that just happens. And, and, and what's good feeling is really just instinctively your subconscious saying, hey, we know, we've done. Um, and there are a few I do get it, in business too. Sometimes like there's, I, I start getting this one call out, I'm looking for a website and it's like, okay, that's fine. And as they start to talk, it's like, oh yeah, I want to mimic this one. I'm like, no, no, I know what this is. You're trying to, this is a scam. He, I just, I've seen it. So you kind of know. Okay, once they start asking for certain things, they're really not. They're looking a scam. And I shut it down right there. It's such a shame that there's scammers out there. And, and it's good to know uh, them that there's so many, especially with what I do. You talk about scammers. Oh, Holy cow, that's a whole nother topic. Scammers are a whole nother topic for sure. Um, you know, anyone well, else? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I guess that's what the, the, what red flags are for to stop that. Yeah, and and it doesn't always happen. Uh, you know, because uh, we we all have that feeling. We all have this ability to go. What? In kind of thing? It's it's instinct. It's your gut and. I think it's more important nowadays to recognize, like, listen to your gut. I think we've talked, like, kind of grazed into this subject in the past in just, like, free-for-alls and stuff. But it's that moment when you're sitting there and talking to a potential client and something inside of you is going, hmm, mm, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't quite get the right, like you get a feeling and you don't know why, but you just get a feeling. <laughs> I've ignored that and had really bad experiences with clients before. So, I mean, because scammers can come in all shapes and forms. You get the people that are trying to, you know, like I know with in bookkeeping, I've had people who racked up a bill and then skipped out on it. You know, it's, there's people that are like that. 
So you have to be careful in all types of dealing in personal life and, and all that. I think and everybody business. has had that experience of having those red flags. And I think the more you have them, the more you recognize them and the more you start mm-hmm. listening to it because, <laughs> because you haven't invested and then you're like, well, I should have listened. So, yes. It is important. Absolutely. Christina or, or Liz, who, does anybody want to say something? Yeah, I had a podcast client who, this was years ago, who did the same thing. You know, I had done work and then they just never paid the invoice, you know, and I'm a very non-confrontational person. So I kind of just let it slide as a lesson learned, but I didn't get any red flags because it was somebody that I had known by name in my circle. And so it was surprising too. I mean, we weren't like friendly, friendly, but it wasn't like a complete stranger. So it was just very odd. And then that was about seven years ago. And then, I don't know, like 18 months ago, his wife contacted me about doing a podcast and I gave her some general information, but she was a flake. So that just... I never did any work Red for her. Flag. <laughs> well, yeah, <Red> flag. <laughs> yeah, I was very cautious going in. And she's a lovely person. You know, neither one of them I would consider a scammer, but it was just interesting. Um, yeah, if so, you don't so, pay a bill, you're kind of a scammer. Uh, that's, that means that, you, well, you know, went and used somebody's services and you made conscious decisions like screw you in plain English. So, yeah. and, and just and, and to interject one other thing as far as being non-confrontational. Uh, yeah, I don't like confrontation either. I don't think a lot of us do. Some people thrive on it, like my, my ex. But um, no, you need to be, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you really have to put that mm-hmm. aside and you need yeah. to be confrontational. Not to the point where you're going to, you know, knock out, drag out, fight, but you've got to be able to stand up for yourself. And, right. uh, and, uh, and you're the bull by the horns because you are in charge. And, you know, you ended up getting hurt because you didn't get paid. You needed to get there and yeah. say, I want to get paid. This is, you know, and, and if they can get a collection company, anything, I don't know, a fake lawyer letter, something, send it out to, uh, go ahead. Yes, Megan. Well, as some of you guys know, like yeah. I, I'm going through this right now and I'm probably one of the least confrontational people you are. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm pretty easy going about things, but you know, when you're not going to pay a nearly thousand dollar bill, that's what it's like. Uh-uh. <laughs> so I'm in the process of, you know, taking legal action about it. And that's, you yeah, can be confrontational, but not be like, nasty confrontational it's like okay well, let just get somebody to help me out with this and they can be confrontational for me <laughs> i'm usually i'm usually nasty conversation i don't like confrontation but it gets to the point where like excuse me my new york comes out go ahead liz i'm sorry i know you say see you waving <laughs> okay um so i have one thing that like i have and it's not necessarily monetary compensation because we've been talking about that but understand that you have your time and your energy compensation because you can't have people constantly, um, you know, coming to you. There's a time and a place where people, you know, you need to be unavailable and you need to tell, you know, tell people your problem and your drama is not my problem or my drama. Like, especially for me as a spiritual healer, I can't carry everybody's nonsense, especially as an empath. I hold all of that stuff. Um, and I think about it because I want to help and fix. So for me, um, which, you know, I'm doing better at that, but there was a time when I had somebody sucked into a really bad situation. It was a bad situation, it was a bad situation, it was a bad situation that I had to cut ties with this person that I was friends with. And it was not fun. They had a bad home life. They were doing drugs again. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. oh yeah, they had a partner actually get arrested for murder. Ooh. Um, that was oh. a client I had that started doing that, all oh, that yeah. stuff. So I backed Back out. Yeah. Yep, I backed out of that. 
but I didn't listen to myself when I was like, mm, this is not a good client to take because bleeding hearts of the world unite. And it was somebody a couple of years younger than me wanted to help get them on the right path. But you have to know when people want help or when they want a spotlight. Yeah. You know, you, you said something really uh, there that got me for, for a second is that I think a lot of these introverted people that go, oh, I'm an introvert. I don't like people kind of thing. I think that, and, and a lot of people think this is hokey, but I really think those are your empaths. They kind of draw into themselves. It's kind of, again, it's that red flag. It's that, that protection against everything out there. Um, I, I've had it happen to me. So, you know, I, I, I'm definitely an empath as well, but there are times when somebody will come to me and I will just absorb their energy. And I'm like, oh, it's one of those useless gifts I have. That's wonderful. But if I acknowledge it to that person, what they've done kind of thing or what has happened, not what they've done because I don't know. But when I acknowledge it, I literally feel it lift right off me. It's really kind of weird. I don't know what this is for, quite honestly. Other, But I think that's a lot of our introverts. I don't know if anybody agrees with me or not. I agree. I agree. I think that a lot of your introverts that like, I've, I've always looked at it as like, we take, introverts take their energy from being alone and being not around people, but then your extroverts, they get their energy from being around people and kind of like, Deborah's here. Oh my God. Yeah. Sorry guys. Deborah has been trying to make it to one of our meetings since we've started. <laughs> we started. I think she was in one. I think the very first one. Yeah. She went on vacation to Jamaica. We never saw her again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought she just stayed. But... <laughs> You're talking about me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're Everyone not. So I was like, oh my God, Deborah. <laughs> We're just talking about uh, red flags and do you get them? And when you get them, do you use them or do you ignore them? Okay. I just saw your um, message pop up and I said, oh my God, I look at the clock. And I said, I wanted to join the meeting, you but then it. your message popped up and that's rem that reminded me to be here. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Um, we're, we're at the end of our 10 minutes. Did anyone else want to add into this, this topic at this time? Go ahead, Sam. So as a freelancer that works off of commission, red flags are difficult because you kind of have to ignore it at the very first sometimes, unless it's a very, very strong, bad feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I've had red flags where, you know what? It's a tip. If I work around it, it's fine. But there are some where it's like, okay, I now understand why that flag is there. So it's definitely interesting because you definitely... Unless, I mean, I'm still building my clientele, so I can't ig all, ignore all of them. But like, it, you got to, once I, I think once you have established clientele, you can ignore, like get rid of people with red flags. But it's interesting when you're building, you can't, you know, it just turn yeah, away business, people like that. In business, yeah. you got to kind of like, you know, got to use your, your brain as well. You know, I will tell you that my red flags are weird. And I, when people, it's also it's your gut as well. Because if I get all nervous and concerned about something like, oh my God, what is that kind of thing? That's not my red flag. I think it is. That is not my red flag. I don't know if anybody else has this. It's when I'm calm and cool about something. That is my red flag. Because I've had this so many times, especially when people lie to me. I've always told my kids, I told past boyfriends and stuff. It's like, <laughs> I will always know when you lie to me. I don't know how I know. I just know. Yeah. And I'm super duper calm about it. And it's like, yeah, okay. All right. I know. I just know. And sure enough, sure enough, I check it out and I'm right. So you also have to learn what your feeling is, what the right feeling is, what your gut does for you and it took me like 60 years to learn that it's calmness it's calmness about an issue that is my red flag mm -hmm. it's weird it's very weird so anyone else on this topic before we go on to helpful hints with Richard actually not so much on the topic a good way to tell if someone's lying if they self-soothe self-soothe 
So in other words, what I'm lying to you. So I start doing stuff like this. Uh, what, what am I doing? It's okay. They'll never figure you out. If you start seeing them doing stuff like this, they're probably lying to you. Body language is a lot of way. That's like body yeah. language. That's like learning body language. It is body language. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just, of I course, just don't like. It's as obvious as I did. I was very obvious about it. They do it. No, it's small. obvious. So stop lying to us, Richard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I'm always doing this. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. oh, oh, you're just so soothing in general. Then. That's that myself. con man right there. There's your con man. <laughs> I'll just say, like, you know, when that's that's one of the good things about zoom being in in place like i before zoom before like all the lockdowns and everything happened most of the time when i would talk to potential clients it would be on the phone uh -huh. it's a lot harder i mean i still got the little red flags every once in a while but i could never really put my finger on why but you know it's so much easier to pick up on things now with having Zoom conversations because mm. you can pick up on body language. And, you know, it, it also like says so much about people of like how they're acting while they're talking to you, not just body language, but like just how serious are they being with you? So like they're set and setting, if they're sitting in their, not talking about you, Scott, I know you're in your car, I'm not saying anything, but if they're in their car and they're just like, they couldn't take the time to actually sit at a desk and give you their full conversation or full attention, attention. When, they're, mm -hmm. when they're having that initial conversation with a potential bookkeeper for them it tends to be a little bit of a red flag. It's like, well, you're not, either you're not taking your business or me serious. One of those two, and that's okay. not a good sign. Uh -huh. Just throwing it yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. Very good, I'm very good. About you, Absolutely. Scott. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna close. I mean, this is this is my office, so. Oh, it is your office. office. That's his office. But then that's if it. somebody that's said it. that, then I'd be like, oh, okay, they are taking me serious. Yeah. But it is, it is a sliding. <laughs> It's a sliding scale when it comes to that kind of thing, too, because I've been on these calls with other people that take Zoom calls in their car. that are also on the move and they're driving or like at a drive through or like picking oh up their God. kids, which I know you have to do. But like you don't have to announce to the whole group that you're doing that and, and interject your self-importance of this other thing. And it's very interruptive. And I mean, I get I get we have life, too, but it's, you know. Yeah, it's got to be we a time have and different, place. Yeah, we all have different responsibilities and we carve out time for, for other people's time, right? That's, yeah, that's the idea. Right. Absolutely. Yes, Liz. Was I do have to say one thing about that, though, because there was a time and I felt really bad. Um, I was trying to come home to be on time to a meeting, which I was actually trying, but there was a traffic detour. So I was in my car, but I did also call the person because it was a phone call. I did pull over and text them, hey, I am driving. I will be in the car, but please call me. I don't want to be late. So Different. give, but, but people I have found are not as open to, some people are not as open to admitting what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a very open, well, you know that, but I'm very open to, hey, this is what's going on with me, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Some people don't realize they need to be that courteous because people really think well my energy my time it's not their business what's going on in my life which no it's not but it's not necessarily fair to the other person who doesn't know what's going on because it may sure. seem one way and it's not so the person yeah. driving yeah maybe they're driving but do we know what they're driving to or what maybe happened that morning like I don't I don't think that it's the driving it's that you know hey I'm talking to you oh wait a second I'm, I'm, I need to order McDonald's yeah I'll have uh you know yeah. The, oh that yeah no not yet I think being yeah, so different. distracted that I'm not important enough for you to just like stop for a second and talk to me I've talked to people while driving too but I I kind of have my phone up here on the windshield kind of thing and so I can drive and talk 
and I could glance over every now and then. So I, I so I, yeah, I don't think he was That's just, just an example. Like I, I mean, it's mostly a, a factor of like, if they're doing something, if I'm, if you are having a potential client meeting with me, it's not just, are you interviewing me to see if I'm a good fit for you? But I'm a bookkeeper. You're doing you. I'm seeing if you're a good fit for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's like, it goes both ways. So if you're so distracted that I'm sit that you're sitting there going, oh, wait, can you repeat that? Or hold on, let me take this other phone call. Oh, let me. Oh yeah. No, not those people. All right, <laughs> All right guys. We are over time limit on this, on this topic and we have to move on. So we are moving. I just want to interject something. I'm so can everybody agree with me. Scott has got some great hair going on. I'm just, yeah. I, just <laughs> yes, I love it. I just got to throw that out there. Um, Pen- pandemic, we pa- to- pandemic savings, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great hair. Um, before we go to Richard, though, because Deborah joined us, I just want to give Deborah her opportunity to introduce herself. Okay, Deb, tell us what you do. Hi, um, I'm Deborah Francis. I am the owner of Integra Accounting and Bookkeeping Services. I um, help small businesses with their taxes, payroll, um, bookkeeping. I also um, help with business structure and I do business consultation. Um, I'm also a licensed life insurance agent, as Megan is. We do almost the same thing. We do referrals to each other. Um, so I'm, I practice and I am concentrating also on not-for-profits um, to do their bookkeeping, their accounting, their taxes, and etc. cetera. So um, I'm also a, a legal shield agent, just like Megan is. So I sell those policies as well. Um, again, my, my business is Integra Accounting and Bookkeeping Services, and it's nice to meet you all. Beautiful. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for joining us. We hope we get you here every Friday I am tr- morning. Yeah, I'm going to set my up. alarm just to all get right. to remember. <laughs> good, good woman. Right. Good woman. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to move on to Helpful Hands with Richard, and Richard is going to tell us about SEOs and how to take care of them even when you have an agency. So I'm really interested in hearing about this. So please, Richard, the floor is yours. All right. No problem. All right. So look, everybody wants to get their business found. That's that's the bottom line. One of the best ways you can do this is you, and what, and what an agency is going to do for you, and you can add on top of it, is to make you into the expert on your field. Whatever it is you do, you've got to be the expert. Otherwise, why are you doing it, right? So what do you what you should do? Start blogging. Write blogs and talk about um, what you do. Now, uh, one of the things you can do, and uh, hold on, let me get something up real quick. Oh, I'm going to Google. I'm going to share my screen in a second, if I can. Let's see if I can. All right. So say I'm thinking, what do I want to write a blog on? Well, you really want to write something that people are looking for. So I have an idea. I go, um, is blogging. And you see, I start getting all these different ideas. These are things that people are searching for. So as I keep typing, uh, good for business, good for SEO. Wow, that, you know, that could probably be some good topics I can do. Also, when I pick my topic and I do my search, if you come down to the bottom, you get more ideas that you could start blogging on. Again, these are things people are looking for. So if they're looking for it and you write blogs on it, that's what they're gonna see. It's gonna come up on their search as you start to to go uh, deeper in. So you really wanna start blogging. Even if you have an SEO agency that blogs for you, blog some more. The more, the more, the merrier. There's really no um, high watermark on how much you blog. This time becomes the real problem. It's like I, I can only do so much physically. That's really the only thing that should stop it. So you definitely want to blog. And if you're a local business, because local and traditional are two different forms of SEO, if you're a local business, something else you can do that actually an agency cannot do for you is you could join associations and you could do sponsorships. Because a lot of times when you do an association, 
Uh, well, no, I, I know you're playing this this group. This is not this, that kind of association. But if you join, say, uh, the Fishkill Business Association, you're now a member. They will actually put a link to your website. Those links back to your website are very important because those are signals, again, that you are an expert. The whole game is played to sit there and make you the expert. And so with the search engines go and say, oh, look, all these people are pointing at your website. You must know something that people want to see. So the more of those you can get, the better. And if you do the associations and the sponsorships and get those backlinks from local places, the search engine go, oh, and you are in this local area. So when they want to find you locally, you could be more likely to start coming up on that map because you are in that area. You're a member of that community. You're showing that I know this community. I am in this community. Other businesses know me from this community and they really take a lot of weight into that. So it's very important to do that. Another thing you should do is go to and get an analytics account. They're free. Set it up in Google. They're free to do. And you know, go in there and it really can make your head explode <laughs> looking at a lot of that. One of the things you do want to see too is how many people do what's called bounce. And a bounce is simply, I go to your website. I don't do anything at all. I just go, oh, I'm gone. They call that a bounce rate. If you go to somebody's website and go to the next page or spend like some time on their reading, you, you, you're not bouncing. But if you're there and instantly go off, you bounce. If search engines sit there and say, wow, a lot of people are bouncing from them, they don't know what they're talking about. If they knew what they were talking about, why would people leave? So you, you start seeing certain pages have that high bounce rate, go back and see what's, what it says and maybe word it differently. Add more information in there. And you also got to remember, you want a lot of information. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I'll put a 200 word blog out there. Don't bother. It's not worth it. Um, if it's not at least 500 words and it should truly be closer to a thousand, you'll get no, no traction from it at all. It's not long enough. It, again, it goes back to that whole thing. They look at it and say, if that's all you have to say, how much of an expert can you be? So everything kind of ties back to the idea of showing that you are an expert and that's what you want to do. And the more you can do it, the better. And a lot of times, like, like I, I, I don't know if every agency SEO person does this or not, but I know I would. I actually have a client that they're doing their own blogs. I'm not getting involved in any of the blogs for them. And I actually like that better because again, they are the expert, I'm not. I will take those resources I would have done for blogging and put them someplace else and then I get a little bit more out of it. So there's a, these little things, you know, they, they're a lot and they're a big deal. Now, do I expect you to get in there and some of the technical stuff and making sure your techs are? No, that's a lot of work <laughs> at that point, you know, you might as well get an agency involved at that point. Uh, but really, a few little things like that you can do that will help boost it. But the biggest one is make sure you blog and blog consistently. You know, don't like, oh, I'll do it once, one, one this week, maybe two next week and take a break for it. No. If you're going to do two, do two every month or every week. But be consistent. And what happens then, too, is people start to eventually start to see it and go, oh, I'm going to start pointing to those blogs. And now you got more links pointing back. Those links again, votes of confidence, and you want as more of those you get, the better. In fact, that's one of the things I spend half my time doing is getting links back to a, a client's website because they are that powerful, that important. Go ahead, I see a question. You have to unmute yourself though. <laughs> so, so a couple of questions. First of all, so if Liz wanted to get more traffic to her website, she right. could blog about crystals and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then now is that blog? Second question, a, another, a different website? No, you should have blogging right on your own website. So in fact, in your menu, you have your homepage, your services page, a contact and a blog page. You can call it blog, you can call it news, you can call it whatever you want, but it's pretty much a blog. And it should be okay. a separate tag. So when people go there, they go to all your blogs. Okay. And your blog should point back to other blogs and point back to your website all the time. You know, if you're, if you're blogging about crystals and you have a crystal page, point to that crystal page. If you're blogging in the future and go, oh, and a, a side note to this, I wrote about this in the past, and point to that old blog. 
So you want to keep that pointing going on constantly. You want to kind of keep on pointing and pointing. But you do also want to blog on Google My Business. The different kind of blogging, you know, you kind of put a, if you have an event, you put the events up there. If you're like having a sale on products, put that all up there. They don't last forever. Unlike your blog on your website, that's going to be there forever in a day. They don't. They, they're there for a certain amount of time and they, they roll off. So you definitely want to, when you put a blog on Google My Business, daisy chain it to the one behind it. So you sit there and go, okay, I blog, this, I blog today. Next week I come, I blog and point back to the blog I did last week. So when it rolls off, people can still get to it eventually. Otherwise it rolls off and it gets lost. So if you keep linking backwards, <laughs> call that daisy chaining, it doesn't get lost in space that way. So there's another spot you want to kind of blog in a lot. You're, you're muted, I can't, uh, you're muted. I don't, I don't understand that. Okay. Google my business, uh, is that like a oh. whole separate thing? Hold on, let me, let me I'm gonna bring that up and share my screen again. Uh, that's not how you spell that. There you go, business school. Actually, I better, um, let me make sure I go in. Okay, do 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 Where am I at? Ah, here goes. Okay, I am where I want to be. I got so many screws open. I want to sure I get the right one. All right. So here's my business at Google. This is my Google My Business account. I could right here go into posts, and I could create post. Now. Inside those posts, you're gonna and I have I I'm I'm bad at this myself my own time, but inside those posts, they actually have a web address. Okay, so one of the things you want to do is put a link to your old posts. So here, hold on, let's see if I do. So kind of uh, what where do I want to go in this? Thing, if you like, in the be beginning of post, say like. So last week we talked about this and then put a link, right? Right, yeah, something like and that. And then, then do your post for that week and then it just keeps right. easy chaining along. So it keeps it up, right? So where do you find this Google My Business? You make it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, if you don't have a Google My Business site, create one. Yeah. We could talk, about that. We could talk about that, that's fine. But you go to business.google.com. Actually, what you do, go to Google, search for your business name. Okay. And so we blew, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's do that now. What the heck? <laughs> Joy's eyes just got me. He's like, oh. Let, let, let's see. <laughs> let's do this. Let's go here. Well, you, I know. Don't do to embarrass me. <laughs> well, you, we, you already said you don't have it. So if you don't have it, we're expecting nothing. So it's just be able to well, I I, My website is not up and running right now. I, I actually took it down because I'm doing stuff with it, but okay. This isn't your website. You have one right huh. there. Here's your Google My Business page. So it looks like you have one. No, I'm not Blue Dove Designs. I'm Blue Dove Marketing. There I am, Blue Facebook. Dove. No, you not Designs? Oh, okay. No, I'm Hold Facebook on. Marketing. I'm Blue Dove Marketing. There, there it was. We just saw it. It's on Facebook at the bottom there. You're right. You don't have a Google My Business page. So you can actually go into business. Blue Dove Marketing. If you could put Phoenix Ferry right books there. there. OE. Oh, OE, yeah. See, I always check it. <laughs> Phoenix, Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, you're not coming up still. Okay, Phoenix. Phoenix. I well, I'm, I'm looking for it coming up Variables. here. The... Wow. Yeah. There, anyway, there she is. Finally, okay. And there's there. So she has a Google My Business account. That's my house. <laughs> well, that's where your office is. So it's going to be your house. <laughs> so if I was to come here and go, oh, my, and one of the reasons you want to do this because you get somebody go in there and say, oh, look, I want to try to do this. And once they do, it's going to say, oh, you can't. It's already owned by somebody. Very if it's neat. not, and I take control of it. When you want to do it, you got to come to me to get it. And people are. <laughs> yeah, I work. We'll for do that. <laughs> sorry to sorry to interrupt. I had I worked for a company that I 
tried claiming their Google My Business, but their competitor had already claimed their business. And they, will and they had no access to it. There was no way to get to it any longer after that. You can talk to Google, but Google's being a pain about that right now. And it takes a lot to, it um, it, you have to get business papers involved. And yeah, it, it can be done, but you are gonna jump through some hoops. So you definitely wanna get uh, your Google My Business page if you are a business, even if you're not brick and mortar, because uh, I'm not, and I have a Google My Business page. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so, we're gonna talk, plan to talk about Google My Business, but there you go, it kind of works too. But wow. You, you definitely wanna get that and get that as soon as possible, because if somebody else gets that on you, it's not fun and they could trash you and trash you bad. Wow, that even shouldn't be allowed. There should be a way well, you need to. Because how Google sits there and says, okay, hey, you say you own this business. I'm going to mail you by a, a postcard. Okay, great. I got a postcard at this address. I, I say, I, here I am. I got it. Oh, you must be legitimate. They have no way of knowing otherwise, especially because you got a lot of businesses like, like, like mine and Megan's were out of our house. There's no signage. Yeah. And you can't tell me I'm not a legitimate business because I'd laugh at you. You know, interesting. So they wow. kind of tough. It's tough. I, I and people will grab those. Well, this has been really informative. I don't know if anybody else appreciated this, but man, I sure did. That's pretty interesting. Thank you, Richard. Sure. Does anybody have any questions for Richard besides me? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I was actually gonna ask Christina. Is are doing blog writing like that is that in your wheelhouse yes absolutely you... um i have to admit I, google yes, google my business is new to me i'm like oh dang i know where i'm going to be spending my afternoon now <laughs> <laughs> i guess my one question regarding that richard is do you recommend the same type of lengthy posts on the google my business as you would uh, on no, your own like web you. You're limited there. It's not the same kind of blog. You don't okay. really have, you don't have as much space to write, so it's not quite the same. Okay. Every different kind of blog. It's not really that kind of informative. Like I'm trying to teach you something kind of blog. You know, like it's a, I, I have a business, a new products, uh, sales, events, little things like that. Oh, kind of more like announcements then. Well, closer to announcements, yeah. Okay. Awesome. But yes, the longer blog posts for your website is exactly what I do for a lot of my clients. And, yeah. you know, just even before you said the minimum of 500 words, I'm like, well, that's already my minimum. You know, anything less than that, you know, I, like you said, it's like, why bother? So. Right. And I, I shoot for a thousand usually. Because it actually has been a study with the, it's funny, the more words, the higher the rank until it gets to a certain point and it kind of goes backwards again. I think I think you go past 2,000, you start to drop back down a little bit. Maybe people get tired of reading, I don't know. <laughs> but I think too, like with the longer, like I totally get what you're saying, but if you find that you are repeating yourself or you're saying the same thing just in a different way, that can kind of backfire on you as well because yes. people will catch on to that and then be like, well, wait, I already heard this earlier. So in my opinion, there is, you know, still like a fine line that you need to walk, that you need to follow, you know, in yes. that your thousand words should be completely, obviously original, but, you know, not full of fluff and other extraneous things. And you know, another thing you should always keep to one topic. Yep. Whatever you write about, just one topic and write about it. If you have a second topic, make it a different blog. Yep. That also helps with your with your uh, keyword stuff. I put, it, I put awesome. it in chat as well. You were mentioning about sponsorships too. We've got somebody right here, Scott, who's looking for sponsors. So I put the yeah. I put that. Yeah, yeah we see that. The chat so like there you go <laughs> awesome well, that's what you got, made. You got somebody to write the great. blogs and you got somebody that you can sponsor there's two right there we just happen to have in in our meeting so that's pretty <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you 
thank you very much, Richard. We're at the end yeah. of our helpful hints. Um, I want to throw out there for next week. I know we, I think we do have somebody for us next week as far as a speaker, um, which is said, uh, but if we're looking for speakers to come in and kind of talk about what you know. Now, it can be about your business, your benefit of your business, or if you have some other topic that you'd like to talk about. I know I wanted to get Deborah talking about uh, LLCs versus um, incorporations. Deb, are you there? <clears throat> yes. Yes, I'm still here. Is that something you might be interested in doing? <clears throat> yes. Awesome. Megan set that up. <laughs> That's how we did that. Um, Deborah, I'll I'll con I'll reach out to you to see what day is good for you. So it would be not it. not next Friday, I'm, but the okay. Friday after, I think. Right? Oh, there she goes with her little pieces of paper. <laughs> All right. Anyone else, for helpful Christina? Hints helpful hints as well. We are looking for yep. people, so we're pretty wide open on the schedule wise. If anybody wants to jump in. This is my With the helpful stuff. hints of anything, uh, Christina, Scott, you're new to us. We'd like to get you involved with us. Um, and certainly if you have something that you'd like to speak about. And um, I bet Scott's got some really interesting stuff with what he does. And uh, any helpful hints <laughs> at all? Don't be shy. This is not a place to be shy, Scott. You're around friends. We love your hair, so it's good. <laughs> Yeah, I've got plenty. I mean, I, I have the opposite problem. It's more about when to stop talking. So, um, oh, don't worry, I'll cut you off. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just did. No, I have a lot of experience with startups, mostly in uh, <laughs> yeah. food and hospitality and manufacturing, both both worlds. So, um, you know, yes. I can. I'm definitely happy to always talk about that. Um, I've done brand work and packaging design, and uh, worked with breweries. I've worked with uh, mail order companies, direct to consumer beverage companies. I, I mean, I, I, you know, <laughs> you guys just want to know about some pastry recipes. We could just keep it to baking. So, you know, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I think your startup business and that kind of thing. I don't know. I think that's kind of important. Uh, I kind of interesting. Um, certainly. So, you know what, you speak about what you'd like to, and you kind of let us know, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like to kind of get you uh, down for a date. I'm looking at July 16th. Are you okay for that? Yeah, sure. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. great. And usually I, I re I'm going to be trying to reach out to you guys. Anybody who could, who wants to be a speaker or helpful hints, okay. usually I try and reach out to you after the meeting before yours so like whoever is going to be the speaker for next week and helpful hints for next week i'll probably contact you guys tomorrow and just reach out so that i can get the ball rolling with i do a pretty little canva and we yeah so we usually need like a picture of you and what you're talking about pretty much so you know yeah. that's important uh helpful hints anybody go, go ahead Yes, Liz. Um, what is we need for a couple hints? Oh, we can't really hear you very well. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, what what days do you need helpful hints? Uh, next week. Yep. Okay. <laughs> you want to do a helpful hints next week? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'd like to uh, get this done now while we're all together. And Liz, okay. Uh, just you, you get with, uh, I guess, with Megan and let her know, you know, what you want to be helpful hints about. So I'll, you know, I make sure I have it in the uh, PowerPoint. Anyone else? Sam, anything? You good? Christina? I'll do one. Yeah. You'll do a helpful hints or, or a main, speaker or a main speaking, whichever. Oh, I would love you to speak. Would you love her to be a speaker, guys? Everybody say yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Right, gonna... Third. You want to do the 23rd, Christine? Well, I was just going to say, though, that's the week that I'm on vacation. So okay. if we have to bump into August, that's fine. 30th or? How about July 30th? Nope, I'm still away. Okay. Wow. Okay. About the 6th. <laughs> yep, that should be fine. August 6th, yep. Christina? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Okay, good. Uh, helpful hints, anyone? Sam? I can do one on Planoly, which is a scheduler for Instagram and Pinterest. Ooh, I can show you how to do again. that. 
Yes, I love it. Uh, let me see. That would be the ninth. Are you good for the ninth? Uh, yeah. Okay. And Sam on candling. And the great candling. thing. I like, I want to put out there too, is don't, guys, don't feel like, you know, oh, I, you know, just have to talk about what I do for a business. You can talk about hobbies. You can talk about things that like, yeah. that's the great thing about our networking. It's not just what, who you are as a And what you do. Business. It's about. It's who you, you are. As a person. Oh, it looks like we lost Scott. Yeah, I think <laughs> he might have had to go, <laughs> but um. Or okay, we'll put them away with all that talking about being a speaker. <laughs> all right. So now is the time. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but usually a couple minutes I spend after uh, our helpful hands before we go into our free for all, just to get people uh, kind of tied down for what they would like if they'd like to be a speaker, helpful hands. So uh, we're going to go on. Megan is going to now cut the recording. As we uh, go on to our that, I'm just going to really quickly just say for anybody who's watching the recording, please, we would love to have you guys come and actually join us so you could get the full effect and be here for the, the help for, or for the free for all, which is also really, really great. And you actually get to free, freely speak without worrying about the the recording being on so please feel free to come bring your friends and i'm going to end the recording now so all right guys